I'm interested about really the findings. What, what business responsibility means to you at Twilio now? Yeah, thank you, Carolyn. I mean, it's um, really interesting. When I think about the contract, the social contract between our society and companies, the idea is that companies make our society better. And that's why we allow things like a piece of paper filed in the state of Delaware or in Dublin can own property and enter into contracts and all sorts of interesting things. And historically, we've said, well, it makes society better because it you know, increases production and increases um, jobs and things like that, and companies make profits. But I actually think now society is asking more from that contract. We at Twilio have this belief that our existence should make communities around us and society overall stronger because we exist. And mm -hmm. that's a multifaceted aspect of this contract that I think goes well beyond what you know the, the last generation of business leaders thought, that it was really just about making a profit. It's also a lot about the data, how you ensure that you are gaining true diversity, how indeed you are seeing that pay equality is coming about. How are you tracking the impact that you make from an environmental perspective, a social perspective, a governance perspective? Well, obviously, we try to track our impact along all those uh, aspects. But, you know, we do it not to have, like, the number to show. Mm. Now, we are transparent about the impact that we're having. Uh, but we actually use, like, when you think about DEI, a lot of companies think about, oh, this data, we have to put it out there to, 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 to prove something to the world. Um, what we think about it is the data is necessary, but you use the data to move, not prove. You, you use the data to impact your activities and to drive how you're building the company to make a company that is ever more inclusive and ever more diverse. And that's how we think about using data. Okay, so can you give us an example? I mean, I know that you've been in particular helping certain non-for-profits, organizations sort of align themselves with you and with other businesses. Is that, can you give us like exact data of how you're doing it? I'll give you another example, right? In business, what do we do? We set goals and we put our mind to achieving them. So when the vaccine for COVID came out last year, we set a goal to help vaccinate a billion people worldwide. Mm -hmm. and, we, and we put to work our product, our technology, we put to work our people and their volunteer time and uh, the resources they're funding from the company. And as a result of that, already just a year in, uh, we have already helped to vaccinate 350 million people. And that is a huge number, but we've just started to run a third of the way to our goal of a billion. But we do that by partnering with organizations who are on the ground, like Gavi, who is out there trying to vaccinate people in poorer countries that don't have readily access to the vaccine. And so we donated $10 million to Gavi. We were the second largest uh, corporation to donate to that cause. Um, and so I'm very proud of what Twilio has done. And this is just another example of how we set goals and we use data to move to get outcomes that we want, as opposed to just to, to try and prove something. Do you hope that it sort of disrupts from within? Are you leading by example in some way? And, and how are you seeing other companies embrace what you offer, use your own tools to do the same sort of thing? You know, the opposite of trying to have a monopoly on doing good, we actually want to open source any idea that we have and help other people to do good as well. You know, one of the last pages of our impact report that we released today actually shows our lessons learned in this past year. And it talks about some of the things that, you know, mistakes we've made and what we've now learned from it in, in hopes that other people can do that. Another example is we started a program called We Pledge 1%. It's a program for our employees to pledge 1% of their time, their income, or their Twilio equity to do good in the world for nonprofits. And we help them to execute that by giving them ideas, help them donate their equity if that's what they want to do. And we've open sourced this and invited any other company who wants to bring this program to their employees as well. And so far, we've got dozens of companies, including Atlassian and Zoom and many others, who have actually brought this program to their employees as well. And now we've got tens of thousands of employees at a variety of different companies all participating by giving 1% of their resources to do good. Interestingly, do you think that it sets you apart from a talent perspective? Are you getting that feedback that people are coming to Twilio because of this? Or is this just sort of an added benefit, quote unquote, if you know what I mean? Well, we have made impact a really integral part of our business. At some companies, you know, doing good is a cost center. Oh, we got to donate to this so we don't look bad in the press, right? At Twilio, that's not how we think about it at all. We think of it as a virtuous cycle. The more good we do in the world, the more that is going to engage our employees and build great awareness and like high esteem for our company that will attract more customers, that will attract more uh, employees, that will then help us build a stronger company that then can allow us to do more in the world. And that is a nice virtuous cycle. And that's why Toyo.org at, at our company is not a cost center. It's actually a business unit. Hmm. And it actually does business to get our product into the hands of nonprofits who could be using our product to do good at great discount 
And then we partner with those organizations, make them successful, and that allows us to then do more good in the world. And I think that's a new model that I'm very proud of having uh, really innovated on. And just briefly, we've got about a minute left. When you are looking at a billion people vaccinated, is this very much on the emerging markets focus? Because I'm thinking of Eric Adams here in, the Union, in New York, potentially not needing people to be vaccinated to go out to restaurants and the like. Well, you know, think about it. Uh, a lot of this is in emerging uh, countries uh, where there isn't as easy access to vaccines. And we're very happy to be partnering with a number of organizations who are doing amazing work, like Save the Children's, another great organization who's mm -hmm. helping to educate the world on the safety of these vaccines. But even here in the United States and, and other wealthier countries, you still see vaccine hesitancy. We still had a huge effort to mobilize and get even the U.S. population vaccinated, and we're still not done, obviously. And yeah. so I see this as, a, as an effort that truly spans the world.